Hey guys, this is Marco here from Aviator Life CS. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to talk about the anti ice and rain system. Uh, once again, I want to thank Dream Aero here. We are standing in front of the sim. Uh, I want to thank Captain Pat Boone for the Boeing 737 MRG. Also, a big thank you to uh, Captain Jorge for his channel, Boeing uh, 737 Pro. Before we go inside the sim, let's uh, talk about an overview of the anti ice and rain system and then I'll see you back there. Yes, so we'll start with an overview of the anti ice and rain system. And to the left side here you can see a picture from FCOM2 with all the systems that use anti ice and rain protection. So the 737 ice and rain protection systems keep critical areas of the airplane clear of ice and rain. Thermal anti icing Electrical anti-icing and windshield wipers are the systems provided for ice and rain protection. The bleed air directly from the engine hits the engine cows. Bleed air from the pneumatic manifold hits the leading edge slats. The flight deck windows and all probes are electrically heated to prevent ice formation. The windshield wipers maintain clear areas on the windshield during takeoff, approach, and landing. The anti ice and rain systems include flight deck windows, you can see it here, windshield wipers on the windows here, the forward windows, probe and sensor heat, uh, you can see uh, the probes here, temperature probe, Peter probes, and alpha mains. Engine anti ice system on the engine cowl lid here. Wind and the ice system, only the three inboard leading edge slats are heated. Okay, what we want to read here, it's very important and just keep it in mind because we need to know when ice and conditions exist in flight or on the ground. In flight, they exist when the total air temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or below, when visible moisture is present, rain, snow, sleet, ice crystals, and clouds and fog with less than one mile visibility. Now, if we check the icing conditions on the ground, and they exist when outside temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or below with visible moisture, and you are operating on ramps, taxiways, or runways when there is a surface snow, ice, standing water, or slush. Okay, now that we know the systems that include uh, anti ice and ray protection, we are going to talk about the panels we have. Uh, today with us is uh, Molhem. Molhem, thank you so much for helping us here today. Thank you so much, Marco. We are very happy to have you. Okay. It's our pleasure. Yeah, Molhem is uh, one of the instructors here in uh, Dream Aero. Okay, before we talk about the panels we have and controls, uh, let's talk about the cockpit windows. Here we have, on the right side, we have R1 window, R2 window, and on this side we have R3 window. On the left side, we have L1, L2, and L3 on that side. Windows. L1, R1, L2, and R2, they are electrically heated. Now, the windows R3 and L3 on the other side, they are not electrically heated. Okay, let's keep talking about the windows. And windows number one and two consist of glass panes laminated to each side of a vinyl core. Flight deck window number three, on the other side, consists of two acrylic panes separated by an airspace. Okay, we have a window heat control unit, which monitors the temperature of the windows, and it keeps it between 37 and 43 degrees Celsius. It removes power when it senses an over temperature. In addition to uh, electric window heat, conditioned air flows across the inside surface of the forward windows for defogging. So here we have the windshield and foot air controls. 
And as you can see, they are located below the captain's and first officer's instrument panel. You can see it there, and you can see it on the captain's side right there. Okay, now let's just start talking uh, about the panels we have for the Annie Ice and Rain. And um, they are located in the forward overhead panel. And we'll start from the top here. And here we have the window heat panel. Here we have the probe heat panel. Here you can see the wind anti-ice panel. Engine anti-ice panel here. And here we have the windshield wiper selector panel. Okay, we'll start with the window heat panel. And uh, we'll talk about the overheat light here. The overheat light is amber and it illuminates when there is an overheat condition detected. Overheat lights also illuminate if electrical power to windows is interrupted. Now if we move down to the on light, it's green as you can see, and it means that the window heat is being applied to selected windows. It distinguishes when either the switch is off or an overheat is detected or a system failure has occurred or a system is at correct temperature. Now we can see the switches here to control the window heat. So you probably see that it says forward and it says side for the left side, same for the right side. So the forward, it controls uh, the heat to the forward windows here and the side controls the heat for the side windows. Now, in the on position, the window heat is applied to selected windows. In the off position, the window heat is not in use. That's very simple. Now, if we talk about the, this switch, you can see it has uh, two positions here, overheat and power test. Let's talk about the overheat. In the overheat, it simulates an overheat condition. In the power test, it provides a confidence test. To do this, we can refer to the FCOM Volume 1. I will leave um, an image here where you can see. Uh, we go to Supplementary Procedure Section 3. It's called Window Heat System Test. Okay, if you go to the MRG, to the Ani Ice and Drain section, we can go to uh, Window Heat Off Overheat. There's something I want to uh, point here about the normal operation. And it says, when the glass pane is heated, it is more flexible and it can resist a higher impact force. Therefore, window heat must be applied at least 10 minutes prior to takeoff for the window to reach maximum resistance. This also explains why aircraft speed must be limited below 10,000 feet. Remember, we have a speed limit of 250 knots below 10,000 when windows are not heated, such as with an electrical failure. So this is very important to know because that's the limitation we have if the window heat is not working. Okay, next we will talk about the Pro Heat panel. But before uh, we do this, uh, let's go and see how this system works and then uh, we'll come back here. Let's talk about the Pro Heat. The probe system components that use electrical power to heat are the pitot probes, elevator probes, alpha vein sensors, and the total air temperature probe. Static ports do not require heating as they are flush with the fuselage. And all these components, you can see them in this nice uh, MRG picture here. The probe heat system is turned on after engine start and turned off during taxi in. When operating on standby power, only captain pitot is heated. And this is important to know. Uh, the pitot uh, probe for standby airspeed is not heated when the airplane is on standby 
power. Now, some airplanes, they have the auto heat function. And when they have it installed, the auto heat control automatically turns on air data component heating in the case that the flight crew fails to activate the probe heat systems. With the switch in auto, probe heat activates automatically when either engine RPM is above 50% N2. And now that we know the systems that use the probe heat, let's talk about the panel here. And we can see the lights for the captain. It says uh, Captain Peter, left elevator Peter, left alpha vein, temperature probe. On the right side for the first officer, it's almost the same, except instead of temp probe, we have auxiliary Peter. These lights, they are all amber, and they mean that the related probe is not heated. If operating on a standby power probe, heat lights do not indicate system S status. Now let's talk about the switches. And here we can see an on and off position. Remember some models, they have the auto position instead of the off position. And let's talk about the, these switches. In the on position, uh, the power is supplied to heat related system. Now, the auto position that we should see here, the power is automatically supplied to both A and B probe heat systems when either engine is running. 